حية يا رفيق الدرب هيا نسلك النهج السوية في سبيل الله نمضي نقتفي فيه النبي نبعث الحب أريجا فائح العطر شديا نملأ الآفاق نورا وبهاء سرمديا يا رفيق الدرب هيا نسلك النهج السوية في سبيل الله نمضي نقتفي فيه النبي نبعث الحب أريجا فائح العطر شديا نملأ الآفاق نورا وبهاء سرمديا وإخاء صادقا عذبا نقيا أريحيا يا رفيق الدرب هيا خذ يميني يا أخيا بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أيها المباركون السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته It's a uh, great pleasure to have our brother um, Amir Junaid also known as Loon we also have our Sheikh, Sheikh Hassan Muhammad from Virginia, inshallah. Sheikh Hassan, pretty much, Seattle is his second home. He's been coming here for a minute now. He's been coming back, inshallah. And uh, it's great to see them, inshallah. We have this program for welcoming Ramadan and uh, how to take advantage of Ramadan, inshallah. And uh, it's great to see a lot of uh, faces. So, inshallah, without further ado, We'll start our program, inshallah. First is going to be our brother Amir, and it's going to, next will be Sheikh Hassan. And after that, if time allows, inshallah, after, after Isha, if time allows, we'll have a panel discussion, inshallah, with our shayukh and also with our imam, Sheikh Mahawud, inshallah. And now, I would like to welcome brother Amir for the tafaddal, mashkura, wa majura. No. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And alhamdulillah, na'maduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'ufiru wa na'udhu billahi min shiruri anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina min yahdiya lahu falamudalala wa min yulil falahadiya la ashadu wa la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluhu صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تمنتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء اتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به وأرهام إن الله كان عليكم ركيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم تنوبكم ومن يؤتي الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما فإن أستقل هذه كتاب الله وخير هدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم الشر ومر مخذاتها وكل مدفة بدعة وكل بدعة دلالة وكل دلالة في النار وبعد My dear brothers and sisters in Islam الحمد لله رب العالمين Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues continues to bestow his countless favors and bounties upon this blessed deen this blessed ummah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and is imperative that we show gratitude whenever the opportunity presents itself. Because this is something that we become grossly negligent in expressing gratitude for the countless favors and bounties and mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, for many of you who are aware you know, of my journey, to a place where many of you started. You started your very lives upon this blessed deen of Islam. And that's something to always be grateful for. 
Because many of us who came from darkness into light, we have a lot to be grateful for. So this gratitude, yet Ikhwan, is something that should be expressed no matter how we got here. Whether you came from the womb of a believer or you was guided from darkness into the light that Allah and only Allah alone can provide, we have to be grateful. And Allah continues to guide those whom he will until the gates of repentance is closed. Meaning Allah's guidance will remain until the day that the gates of repentance is closed. And two things we should take away from this that's also in accordance to gratitude is that when Allah guides an individual to Islam, and for those of us who've been Muslim, whether born Muslim or guided to Islam, it becomes a reminder to us. It becomes a reminder when Allah continues to guide a soul from darkness into light, that this guidance, that this mercy of Allah still exists. We should be grateful. But then also, yet equal, we should be fearful. Because when Allah guides an individual to Islam, for those of us who are negligent in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that means that guidance can possibly be a means to replace you. This is scary, yet equal. When Allah guides someone to Islam to replace someone who is negligent with their Islam. So this is why as a reminder to myself and all of you here, inshallah, that we have to remain grateful. We have to exercise gratitude whenever the opportunity presents itself. Because a lot of times, we only show gratitude when there's something that we were striving for, something in particular. And when we receive it, alhamdulillah, now we're grateful. Because that's some, that one thing that we wanted. But wallahi azim, every time you open your eyes, you should be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every time you step off your bed and place your feet on the floor and you're able to walk, you should be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you can look in the mirror and see yourself or look out the window and see things, we should be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But now we have the most blessed month on the calendar yet, Iquan, literally right around the corner. And this is something that all of us are preparing for. All of us are preparing to embark upon the only act of worship that is solely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is a very personal month that is coming. This blessed month of Ramadan is something extremely personal for the Muslim. It's personal because it's the opportunity to draw closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's the opportunity to rectify our fears. It's an opportunity for us to purify our hearts and our intentions. It's an opportunity for us to increase in that which is pleasing to Allah and abstain from that which angers the Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's very important, yet Iqwan, that we take this concession from Allah extremely serious. Extremely serious. Wallahi, I just came from a place, for many of you that know, I spent nine years in federal prison. May Allah make it easy for the brothers that are incarcerated. Because the conditions in which we had to observe Ramadan is something I wouldn't wish on nobody. I wouldn't wish it on a single soul to have to observe Ramadan under the conditions that is established in the prison system. So all of us that are free to worship Allah, we have nothing impeding us for worshiping Allah. We have no excuse. We have no excuse during this blessed month. There's nothing in the way. There's nothing impeding you. There's nothing stopping you except yourselves. If one doesn't want to seize the opportunity to draw closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or don't want to seize the opportunity to increase their relationship with the Qur'an, to increase their relationship with the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then verily you have a problem, Ya Ikhwan. And when you have a problem, we have a problem. Meaning all of the Muslims. Because I don't believe that the Muslims are alone 
when they have problems. I don't believe that when a Muslim is suffering from some difficulty or hardship that he's alone. Because first and foremost, we have Allah Azza wa Jal, and then we have this brotherhood that Allah has established only for the believers. Allah says, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِخْوَةً Only the believers are brothers. Only the believers. So that means I have a brother that came from the same hole as I came from, but everyone in here got more rights than him. And I'm cool with that, if you're cool with it. Alhamdulillah. So inshallah, tabarakallah, I just want to establish a few reminders so that we're all on the same page in understanding that this blessed month is a mean for us to get back to that which is correct. I've spoken to a few of the brothers who have informed me and educated me on some of the fitna that plagues the community here. And believe me, Akhi, there's is, 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 is no community on this planet that's free from fitna. We all are going through something. No one's unique in this situation. No situation is foreign. And we all know living in the West, in this society, there's a lot of things that challenges, challenges our blessed, you know, this Islam, challenges our value system, challenges the way we view ourselves, and in some cases, what Iyadi Bilal challenges the way we view Allah. But make no excuse, Ya Iquan. This blessed month of Ramadan is a means to escape all of this. And it's important that we prepare to make the most of it, inshallah. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said, Qul ibn Adam Khattaun wa khayru khattaina. Right? All of the sons of Adam was sin. All of the sons of Adam. He didn't say some. He said all of the sons of Adam sinned. He said, but the best of sinners are those who turn in repentance. What better time, yet Iquan, to turn in repentance than this blessed month of Ramadan? Although we have the opportunity tonight, doesn't necessarily mean we have to wait the Ramadan. So? But the opportunity for all of us to turn to Allah in, the, in repentance. Because the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned that every son of Adam sins. Meaning there's not a day that goes by from the most pious of us and the most negligent of us. There's not a day go by that a sin is not committed. But listen to the statement. The best of sinners. If I stop right there, that could be misinterpreted. The best of sinners, the best of sinners are the one who turns to repentance, not the one who continuously commit the sins and never repent. He's not the best of sinners. The best of sinners is the one who turns in repentance to Allah Azza wa Jal. So how do we truly repent? The early man, they are in agreement that there's three, three steps Three conditions to a true repentance. One is first and foremost to feel remorse. First and foremost to feel remorse for the sins that's committed. But yada bilah, when we come to a point where the heart feels no remorse and sins are continuously committed and deemed to be insignificant, then we have a problem here, Iquan. We have a problem. And based on, alhamdulillah, what I've been informed, that many of the youth, may Allah protect you, have fallen into sins that are not truly sins that you're exposed to. These are sins that you're seeking. 
There's a difference when you come from an environment that I came from. I was born and raised in New York City, in Harlem. Once upon a time, one of the worst cities in the state. Infested with drugs, violence, so on and so forth. A place where growing up, the options were minimal. The vast majority of you brothers who sit before me today, you have one favor upon you first and foremost, you born Muslim, alhamdulillah. Many of your fathers, grandfathers, your elders, born in the Muslim land. Mothers, born in the Muslim land. Nurtured and cultivated in the house where Tawheed is established. So this right here eliminates all your excuses. To be falling into any sins that correspond with gangs, that corresponds with drugs, that corresponds with violence against other Muslims and so on and so forth. This is not something that is circumstantial. Wallahi Azim is a choice. These are sins that are chosen. These are not sins that are circumstantial. So no one has to expose their shortcomings or deficiencies, but the reality is known. The reality is known that anyone that's committing these sins and their heart is removed from remorse, then you're going to have a problem with the very first condition that's required for a sincere repentance. Is that the heart is numb. That you believe that listening to music Wasting away your time on social media. Falling into abusive drugs. Aligning yourself with members of gangs. Unnecessarily inflicting violence upon people with no justification. This is not something from Islam. This is not something that is circumstantial. Any of us can go on our phones right now and Google the crime rate in this place right here. And wallahi azim, it won't match half the country. Not even 90% of the country. With a crime rate in this location. Meet the status of majority of this country. Not too long ago, I spoke in Philadelphia, which right now is the murder capital of the United States. And the majority of the murders that's happening there is Muslims killing Muslims. SubhanAllah, Adeem. I'm talking about frequently, Yeh Kwan. So I say this to say whatever magnitude of sins being committed, whether it be from the youth or from the elders as well, we're not free from this neither. We're not free from this neither. Because we've been appointed as shepherds and we're responsible for our flocks. We're responsible. So we don't have the liberty to give up on a Shabbat. We don't have the liberty to, to, to clean your hands. Because these are sins, Ya Ikhwan. These are sins. When we just allow the generational gap to get wider. When you find yourself spending eight hours working, your child spending eight hours in school, and you spend about eight hours a week communicating in their own house. That's a problem, Ya Ikhwan. Many of us as parents, we probably got about three questions we ask at the dinner table. How was school? How was Quran? How was the madrasa? How's your friend? How's Ahmed? Khalas. You know it's a problem when you live in a house and fathers don't know their sons and sons don't know their fathers. This is a problem, Yehuan. 
And these type of situations may be circumstantial based on the difficulties that come with trying to survive in this society. So well, like I said, whatever the magnitude of this sin is, if the heart doesn't feel any remorse, then we're going to have a problem with the first condition. Second condition is to build up the resolve to never return back to those sins. This is what we need this month for. We need this month to build up the resolve. After we have remorse in our hearts for this sin, we have to build up the resolve to never return back to this sin. Only you know what those sins are. And if you choose to, for the sake of Allah, for the sake of his bounty, his reward, his mercy, choose to abstain from these sins, then you have to build up the resolve to never return back to them. And third, you have to renounce them totally. This is repentance, Shaykhwan. This is not about making istighfar. Seeking forgiveness, alhamdulillah, we do this until we build up the resolve. Once we build up the resolve to never go back to the sin, then we renounce it. We renounce it totally. And this is what we want to use this month for. The Prophet Sallallahu he was asked, فَأَيِّ صَائِمِينَ أَحْدَمَ أَجْرَ Whom from those who have fasted and received the greatest reward? This was asked by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Whom from those who are fasting received the greatest reward? And he mentioned, أَكْثَرُهُمْ ذِكْرِ لِلَّهِ Those who remember Allah the most. Look how simple that is. Because it wouldn't make sense to stand here and talk about the problem if we don't have a cure, right? Because we all can identify with the problem, but the cure is simple. The Prophet ﷺ was questioned, who receives the best reward while they fast? And he said, those who remember Allah the most. So this is taking action. Taking action is being in constant remembrance of Allah. Constantly seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Until we build up the remorse and we build up the resolve to never return back to the sin. And by the end of Ramadan, inshallah, we're able to renounce whatever those sins are. Totally. That's the goal, Ya Iqwan. This is the reminder for myself first and foremost and everyone present. This is the goal for Ramadan. Is to reflect about our deficiencies, our shortcomings, and our flaws. Until you feel the remorse in your heart for these actions, for these statements or actions. Once the remorse reaches the heart, we have to build up the resolve to never go back to them. And then by the end of Ramadan, inshallah, we renounce these sins totally. Because this month is not just about drawing closer to Allah. It's about rebuilding our houses. Allah mentioned in the Quran, save yourself and save your family. Wallahi, if everybody did that, ya Ikhwan, how much tranquility and harmonious would the environment be? If we implemented the most permissible form of selfishness, which is save yourself. It's not like the movies when someone dives in front of a bullet and he goes to heaven, right? You see a shooting and he dives and oh, he goes up to heaven. This is the movies, Akhi. This is not reality. The reality of it is Allah commanded us to be selfish in one area, which would benefit everyone. Save yourself, then save your family in that order. This is why they have this in the airport. Many of y'all been on a plane, especially if you, you were born in Somalia. You took a long flight here, so you know what the plane is like. And when they, before they take off, they read you the thing, right? They tell you if, any, if there's any cabin pressure and the mask come down, what they tell you? Put the mask on yourself first, then the child. Well, I hear somebody was reading the Quran when they came up with that. Had to be. Because it's instinctive for a parent, right, to panic 
put the mask on the kid, then you slide unconscious, now the kids see you, they take the mask off, cry, panic, now both of you unconscious. Doesn't make sense, right? So Allah says, save yourself and save your family. It's important. So inshallah, I don't want to take up too much time. You know, we have the brother Sheikh Hassan, Muhammad, who I've had the pleasure you know, to benefit the people a couple times on Clubhouse. This is actually a, a reunion for me on many levels. This is a reunion for me to come back to Abu Bakr after 12 years and then to finally meet this brother, inshallah, when we've been trying to benefit the people using social media for benefit. Don't get that confused. I repeat, using social media to call the people to Islam or to remind the Muslims of the beauty of Islam. Because if we're going to spend this much time engaging in all of these things that are put in place to distract us from the memories of Allah, which the Prophet Sallallahu was asked, right? Who receives the most reward when fasting? And his answer is those who remember Allah the most. So if we spend hours and hours engaging in social media, understand we coming up with the, with the uh, uh, attention span of a goldfish. This is why they make these little 30 second clips, these reels and TikTok, because you got the attention span of a goldfish. If you don't know what I mean, go to a pet store, tap the glass, you see a goldfish go this way. Then they get focused, you tap, they go this way. This is a goldfish. So now when the human being attention span becomes equivalent to a goldfish, then you have a problem. You have a problem. There's no way you ever be able to sit in a durus for an hour, 30 minutes, when you have the attention span of a goldfish. So there's many things that we can address here, Iquan, but I want to leave it up to you. I want to leave it up to you to reflect on the things that you know you need to work on. Because I myself, Wallahi Azeem, I need this Ramadan. I need this Ramadan. Took nine years of observing Ramadan under some conditions, like I said, I wouldn't wish on nobody, but to be free. And observe Ramadan, this is a ni'mah. It's a blessing for me, it's a blessing for my family, because they was incarcerated nine years as well, being patient for me. So based upon that, you can look at your situation. You don't have to look at mine, but look at your situation. Because this is a month of rectification. It's the month of rectifying our affairs. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this easy for us, inshallah. You know, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this Ramadan better than the last one. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we enter this Ramadan and leave this Ramadan better than we ever been in our lives, inshallah. Now is the time, Ya Ikhwan, to be Muslim. This is the time now to be Muslim more than any time. It's time to be Muslim. It is time to be Muslim. It is not time to start imitating anything that's not from Islam. It is not time to be falling into anything that is not from Islam. It is not time to be making excuses. It's time to be men. It's time to be accountable. And it's time to be Muslim. Barakallahu feekum. Wa jazakum Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.